Hello, and welcome to the People Do That podcast. On this podcast, we're going to talk to people that do epic shit with their lives. These are people that are good at life. We will talk to life coaches, sports broadcasters, fitness experts, marine special ops, and even someone who became a doctor after the age of 50. Because you know what? People do that. People do that? People do that. Well, now give me just a little bit, I don't need a lot. Open up your heart, show me what you got. The sugar tastes sweet, coffee in the pot. Let's just start right laughing. There. That's a good way to start. Here we are, another podcast, and I'm so excited for the guest today. But uh, first off, let's uh, let's check in with you guys. What's up? A lot of times when we start this, we have to say, start, hit the button. Yeah. So when we're laughing, we're actually should have been recording what we were laughing about, yes. which was Brian Reed saying to Tim, we should just talk about your mustache for a half an hour because you took a lot of pictures in Mexico <laughs> oh, City yes. with just you and your boy's mustache and your dad. Yeah. Well, we did go to Mexico City. It was kind of a, um, a pilgrimage, if you will. Uh, my dad had never been before, and my son Cody was in town for spring break. So we went down there, and we've had a plan for a couple months, and I told the boys, because Cody has a mustache. He wears a mustache. It's a little light, but he goes with it. Really? It photographs well. Yeah, it, it does. came it in does very good, strong yeah. in, the, in the photo. Well so done. Cody's got Wait. the mustache. Yes. Cameron can grow a mustache in about yes. two hours. I don't have very good mm. hair growing ability, but I decided for this trip, I'm like, we're taking my dad yeah. and he is known for his incredible yes. stash. I'm like, boys, <laughs> let's do it. So I've actually been growing it in top secret the last two months, like with this little fake little mm. beard thing uh -huh. and then sneaking in the mustache a little thicker. <laughs> Nobody noticed. Nobody said anything. <laughs> But then I unveiled it that morning. I went clean shaven. Oh. But the trick is, well, it's probably not a trick for most people, but at Walgreens, they sell the mustache coloring kit. Oh, yeah. So I went to work that morning and mm -hmm. uh, darkened it up a little bit. <laughs> And uh, how did you decide how far how far down to go? I went down a little far a little at first, <laughs> a little yeah. much, a little gross. You went from, from bad guy to yeah. restauurateur, yeah. <laughs> father of yeah. two, passed two right by evil. cop. Ooh, went a little thin. Up. I was like a painter for a while. Passed <laughs> right by cop. Okay. Yeah, I did <laughs> not do the cop. Not I couldn't thinking. imagine. Like I saw you with, with the the four of you together. I couldn't imagine your dad with without one. Right, no. like if like no. he, he he could walk right past me without a mustache, yeah. I would not recognize him. I that cried was... when my dad cut his. He yeah, he walked bald. in the door. He had no mustache. I bought physically bald. Was this, did he rock one for you? Yeah, no, I was forty three. <laughs> no. <laughs> dad, why? <laughs> what the fuck? No, I, I mean maybe seven or eight, ten tops, something yeah. like that. He walked in. It's not my dad. Okay, so oh, yeah. then, so then, did Sorry. your dad say something? Yeah, about he walks it? in and he's just like, "Hey, Cody, you're looking good, man." And then he sees Cam. Cam, you're looking handsome, man. Like he, I don't think he could really pick up on it. He just knew everybody looked fantastic. You. Something, there's something about you today. What is and, that? Uh, What's that caterpillar on there? <laughs> uh, no, but he cracked up. We took pictures, and then uh, yeah, Zach and I got home from Mexico City. Yeah. Julie handed me the razor. And she said, "Welcome home. Shave that off." Wait, did you? You, I, did you, you flew to Mexico yes. City, right? Yes. So you wore it on a plane. I wore it on a plane, which was <laughs> right? fun. Yes. <laughs> right? Did I they ask you, ask you to fly the plane? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you must be in the jump seat today. <laughs> you got any deadheads heading over to Mexico hey, City? Right. <laughs> uh, working hard or hardly working? No. <laughs> uh, what's your Victor Vector? <laughs> yes. Roger. Roger. Over. Over. Oh, you got an event coming up you're cooking for? I got an event. Uh, if you listen to the podcast, you know that someone, actually two people, um, decided that they would pay $4,000 to a charity to have me cook for their party of 10. Wow. And nice. it's coming up on Saturday. So nice. I just did the menu, and I'm thinking to myself, because I'm buying the food. That's my donation okay. so, oh, that, that's so nice. that the charity yeah. got all of the money. So I'm going, how do I, what's $4,000 worth of food? Right. Like, not that I'm going to spend $4,000. Yeah, right. No. But 
I don't even know what to buy. Like so lobster, mac, mac and cheese, like, I think. Well, yeah, like <laughs> lobsters and Wagyu beef. Like, I don't know what to do. So I was talking to her and she's like, no, we don't care about that. Just right. make us good food. I was like, okay, that makes me feel better. I was a little nervous. Like, yeah. what are they going to expect? Some like gold flaked, you know, like yeah. tomahawk <laughs> ribeye that I killed but the cow myself. they're paying for the Food Network guy. That's it's right. Yeah. That's what they're paying for. Right. Yeah. What? Are you cooking? Like, are you going to demonstrate in front of them? In, or right in front of them. Okay. Right in so front of them. that's part of the experience. That's part want. of the okay. experience, yeah. Okay. Is, uh, she okay. wants, I said, how much do you want me to prep before I get there? She's like, no, we want to, like, I got a big this big kitchen island and a big outdoor island. Like, we want to watch you do it all. And I'm like, okay. Okay. Well, on the other <laughs> side, speaking of amazing food, our uh, our guest mm. is uh, the owner of uh, Arizona Wilderness Brewery, which is one of the best brew awesome. pubs in the entire world. And we're going to bring him in in a moment. We're going to talk food. We're going to talk beer. We're going to talk saving the planet, all of it, coming up. Well, boys, today we have a modern-day renaissance man with us. Jonathan Buford is the CEO and founder of Arizona Wilderness Brewing Company, my personal favorite, which has received rave reviews from the likes of Esquire Magazine, the Phoenix New Times, Phoenix Magazine, and was named the best brewery in the world in 2013 by RateBeer.com. Jonathan drove to Arizona from Ohio in his rusted-out 1988 Chevy Nova with no money in his pocket to explore the vast Arizona landscapes. After running a window-washing business out of his garage in 2010 while backpacking through the Arizona wilderness, he decided to take his interest in craft brewing to the next level and start his own brew pub. It has now grown to over 160 employees and is built on company culture and treading lightly on our limited resources. Jonathan and his business partner, Patrick, have driven initiative to save 320 million gallons of water from the Verde River to drastically reduce landfill by using recycled materials and to support local farmers and vendors by seeking out local partners for all menu items. In his spare time, he is an avid backpacker and photographer, and his amazing photos are featured in Arizona Highways Magazine with a book coming out in September. There is so much more to this man, so let's get into it. My friends, meet the incredible Jonathan Buford. What's up? Thanks for having me. Yes. That's wow. exciting. Wow. Wait, best bar in the world? It, brewery so, in the world? So let's I don't start, wanna, with, I don't let's start at the now. top. It yeah. was <laughs> the best new brewery in the world, okay. 2014. That's, I like that. That's yeah, cool. we'll just go with that. I like no, that. Yeah. yeah. No, it's semantics. Who's going to fact check us anyways? <laughs> if they do, they'll find things about <laughs> yeah. it and they can come to their own conclusion. But to wow. even get that award, I mean, what It was incredible. amazing. Yeah. It, was, it was part of the charm that wilderness is. Um, I woke up one morning and there was a um, there was an email saying congratulations from a Danish brewer. And he's like, I'd love you to come over. Um to our festival, and I had not traveled to Europe yet, and I was like, uh, in, in Copenhagen in May, what congratulations for what? Turns out the, the news was released there early, and I went, okay. And then as I learned what that meant, out of the 40, 400 breweries that opened that year, we were named the best of the new crop. And that, wow. that was a big deal in 2014. There was so I much guess. hype around yeah. craft beer yeah. that it was... And we weren't ready for it, so I, you know, that's a whole different. <laughs> we could probably go an hour of podcast on not being ready for a business, but it was fun that day, and then I had to become a business. Yeah, owner. you're and like, I need my pat. I don't have a passport. Let me get you my passport well, yeah. before we go to Copenhagen yeah. and receive my award. Yeah, and I, you know, fueled by little sleep and alcohol, I went to to Europe and started my own my uh, my own journey in young manhood um, <laughs> on making mistakes and learning, you know, what's important and not. But yeah. I, Certainly wouldn't trade it because I can't, but I would do things differently. Um, and it was a really fun experience to get that award. But right. I like to mentor young, you know, Joe Johnson mentored me, Bianco mentored me, um, a lot of, you know, Di Lorenzo mentored me. I, now I can pass some of that on. Right. Like when you get an award and all this stuff, let's talk yeah. about what you'll become yeah. and what you, you know, should see the signs before because awards can change the person and so wilderness we're lucky to be there 11 years in um we tried our best to mess it up but (laughs) (laughs) But when you list names like bianco and joe johnston i mean that's as good as it gets in arizona when you talk to that quickly really yeah well i know you serve some of their citrus in in your beers don't you yeah 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 yeah, it's a it's a you know it's it's quite a story that his parents own that you know farmland Mm -hmm. and 
you you know what he's done with it with epicenter and everything it's it's you're not going to run into business owners like that who control that much right. anymore with yeah. the cost of doing business so yeah i listen pretty quick when those <laughs> you know men and women kimber from local first we we met um, yep. and i took a lot of advice about what it's gonna be after you get popular well, I know Nick is like literally drooling. Before we get to your past and how you came over here, like I want to get into like the food. Like yeah. I want to talk about the brewery because that that is like the feature. It's so amazing. And I know Nick has already been like salivating yeah. on the menu. And he's like, I just can't wait to talk about uh, this just menu. whoever wrote it. Yeah. yeah like yeah. wrote the menu to explain like. Because you read, you, you eat with your eyes, yeah. right? And then you eat with your nose. Yeah. So your eyes first read it, and then you smell it, and then you see it, right? All of these sensory things and <clears throat> the concentration on the local stuff. And be, and yeah. sometimes, to me, places, they're acting like it. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. we try to do as much, you know, the fresh fish of the day. It's yeah. not. No, you're lying. No, no, it's not. Yeah. It didn't fly in from San Francisco. Yeah. Yeah. But you're still calling it this, or you didn't get it, you know, that from this place, right? You're just kind of. I went foraging for those mushrooms right, this yeah, morning it, right. in Oregon. But, yeah. But the, yeah. however it's written, like when I first went, and it, I was probably there a couple of weeks after you first opened, it was like, oh, they, they really want to do this. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, the fir- I mean, I've been a part of every menu, if not written them, the recent ones. We have a brand artist now that helps incredibly. The margins are apparently a thing when you print. Um, but yeah, it was, it was to, to go to the core of the subject. I didn't think about food more than 10% of what the beginning of the company was going to be. Um, it was a craft brewery with a kitchen in the back. I mean, the building itself was probably the worst choice I could have made, but that's kind of, that was my brand. Yeah. It was, we can, I can see it. Let's go. And everyone else, if they were to dial in what the problems would have been, I wouldn't have opened uh, that building had no patio. The right. kitchen was built as a Godfather's Pizza in '96, <laughs> and it was meant for uh, you know a pizza oven that that had no flow for a line. And I, all these things didn't matter to me. So, the first menu was written at two in the morning the night before. We found a chef. Um, she was the daughter of our RO water installer, of course. <laughs> yeah. Cla- yeah, the I classic know. connection. <laughs> right. And so, Noni going that cooks? Yeah. My daughter. Get her ass in here. Yeah. Yeah. True story. Um, and, and, you know, we, we wrote the menu, and I remember, you know, one of the vivid memories of opening was these people sitting there ordering food at rates that we, I think we ran out of food night one, and you go, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Where's the beer sales? They're good, but people want more food. And it just... My creative spirit, my desire to um, tell a story, food is so intrinsic to wilderness now. And that started night one. Uh, yeah, we talked about it. Don't get me wrong. But it was always a thing in the back. Yeah. And now, I, you know, what I've learned in 11 years is a master class, what I've been taught. I don't know that I am uh, worthy of talking about it all the time, but... We we knew right away that this was going to be a, a thing, and I I got I because of photography I I was good with Photoshop, and I painstakingly made a menu in Photoshop. Which now there's three hundred different ways, three thousand <laughs> different ways to make an, a menu in five minutes. I did it this this very long painstaking way, but that's again on brand for me. I, yeah. I really liked it, so we did a Kickstarter. Go back six months before, or a year before we opened, mm-hmm. and uh, in the video, I'm proud. I look at it, you know, you see your young self, and you laugh. Yeah. Like, what was I thinking and saying? <laughs> I was selling the shit out of it. That's what I was doing. I was, Good, uh, you got to do that. Yeah. yeah, but I did say some things that still ring true about how we're gonna be kind of. I was very frustrated with how people view Arizona. I don't like the five C subject. I think that we can throw the sixth C, which is conservation. Um, and I, I, I don't nice. believe that the five C's have done a lot of good, um, in the past 50 years. And, and, you know, one of them cattle, um, you're just buying beef and it's showing up and magically, you know, there you go. It's, it's a burger. Um, yeah. I said in the Kickstarter video, we're going to be kind of the liaison to the farm, you know, the middle person to the farmer and the customer. And I, I just, how we build it. And it's an expensive way to run a business. I wouldn't recommend it for everyone. You need to really, really um, be in it for the long haul. 
And, and so, yeah, that's the foundation of where it started. I definitely am a part of every menu revision. So apologies for the subtractions, but there are times when the organic chicken or the eggs from a local organic egg co-op are backbreaking to a business. Um, so we, we don't want to say get rid of things unless it's a have to situation. Right. And I'm sure you're aware of that. I'm sure you've had these conversations where it's like organic black beans versus black beans. Right. I, we wouldn't succeed without it. So, you know, there is a, um, a, a, a interplay going on at all times, but the standards, that's something that it's uh, intrinsic. Yeah. You could tell um, yeah. there's not, I, I mean, I've, I travel for work and I've been to a lot of different places you're not walking into a pub like that, a brew pub, and seeing duck confit fries. Well, I appreciate that. You're, you're not. Yeah. And, 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 so and the, so originally, by the way, originally it was confit chicken legs. Yeah. Um, the, cool. and, 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 and this is when I knew someone is fucking paying attention. They tell you in the description of the confit chicken legs, there is a pin bone in this leg. Please be aware of it. Like in the, I'm paraphrasing it. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. can correct me. And I said, well, this is, someone's paying enough attention to tell me that there's this pin bone in this confit leg. One of the better bites that I've ever put in my mouth of anything that I've ever eaten is yeah. that yeah. confit chicken leg, which I think are now chicken wings. Yeah. Right? The confit there's a story behind wings. that. Okay. Yeah. So let's hear that well, story. Wait, okay. So <laughs> each year is a, um, the ability to tackle a big new problem and chicken the way I see it, um, chicken is overproduced in America um, and is produced so much so that people forget that they're eating an actual animal. It's just a term that, you know, we have a downtown Gilbert, a new chicken uh, company that just opened up. And I see the way they're marketing it. And I'm never going to talk about about another restaurant because it's we're all one giant family. Right. But it, it at wilderness we have a chance to do something different we have a chance to rewrite the blueprint so we uh 2019 started to approach what would be the local chicken option there isn't a good one there's two wash ranch uh -huh. good luck with that you're going to have a staff uh, pulling apart ligaments and deboning something and your labor is going to be like 79 percent so we tried, we made a couple specials, but we stuck with our, our commercial purveyor because they were consistent, you know, the, the, the boxes showed up and it had what we needed. But after COVID, um, it was on our list still and we went with Cook's Ventures uh, and we started to, they were going to be regenerative organic by December of last year and they went out of business. They had a $50 million tech investor pull out. And so Ooh. these these stories happen mm -hmm. all the time in food where you're trying to do something right and it took mm -hmm. they were they were moving greenhouses on wheels solar panel controlled and and these chickens were you know uh, grazing it was amazing but it was expensive it was difficult and I could see it so now we're with Mary's chicken we can't go with the organic but we those those drumsticks Cisco the big food purveyor was trying their best to find closer to us options so we mm -hmm. can we can get a less uh, carbon footprint on that delivery and we just couldn't we ended up in colorado with a company called redbird um good people good chicken but mary's came along after cooks and said here's our wings here's what we do here's how we do it. here's how we feed them come check everything out they air chill their chicken after they take their lives instead of um, water chill saving hundreds of millions of gallons it's also in fresno mm -hmm. close to us so it fit a lot yep. of our parameters um, and so you can see the detail we put into the auditing system we we learned a lot of this from patagonia the clothing company um, great which company. we are making yeah. a beer with now and we're we're getting oh to, really yeah That's awesome. yeah we have it on shelves now the kerns of lager so we 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 audit and we're probably yeah. annoying, but those phone calls on the other end are pretty... I didn't annoying. know this was going to come up today, but I do have to say, mm -hmm. I took a picture of this part of the menu when I was there just to send to my kids because yeah. they're really into this too. And this is, like, you know, on a menu, like it'll say like chicken, hot sauce, buffalo wings, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. This is the description under this, and this is yeah. only part of it. Mary's Legacy chickens are specially bred free range birds that are fed a vegetarian diet and live much longer mm -hmm. lives than most chickens bred for meat. Slow growth chickens tend to have more developed muscles and firmer texture resulting in meat that is juicier and more flavorful compared to conventionally raised chickens. They are also raised in conditions that are prioritize animal that prioritize animal welfare. 
Um, they grow at a natural pace, exhibit more natural behaviors such as foraging, roaming while developing robust immune systems, healthier bodies, reducing the need for antibiotics, interventions. Like, that's half of it. I'm not going to read the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, and that's, but that's probably incredible. A <laughs> that's probably a summary yeah. of it. Right. It's yeah. hard to run a story, Brand, but the con- see, the thing is the cone fee was the, the gateway to getting the attention. That mm-hmm. was the, mm-hmm. the holy shit moment. Yeah. That really, you know, for me, when I was explained cone fee and we said, we've got to try this, that was the only way to get people to pay attention to these stories. Same with our beer. Mm-hmm. Same thing, you know, on, on our merch program. Wow, you think that hard about it. So, so I love that you found that. Um, we, had, You know, when they started to become $24 for five, four or five, we just went, and, and COVID made it so it was impossible to see the future, wow. which is still kind of there. Um, you have to really think about a new style of menu that you can pull things off tomorrow. Yeah. It's no longer this, mm-hmm. this legacy menu, yeah. which mm-hmm. the PB and J that's one of our legacies, but that's Brian's oh, yeah. go-to. Yeah. There you go. Yes. Yeah. There I you got go. that idea from a brewery in Cleveland. That's awesome. And they were using but, GIF and I was like, we can make our own peanut butter. We can make our own. Okay. Yeah. There you go. But what that, that confit process, I mean, even yeah. the fine dining restaurants don't do that because of time. Right. I mean, I, I've, I've been around very few confit things, but it's basically getting oil to around 200 degrees and just putting stuff in there and walking away. Cooling overnight. Yeah, it's, it's an old French style of cooking before refrigeration. And it's, that's um, the osmotic pressure is so high that bacteria can't thrive overnight, you know. Um, so it was in place of refrigeration, but it also renders the fat. Yeah. So mm-hmm. if you have a good quality piece of meat, confit is a beautiful way to do it um it's expensive so that's what i'm saying i can't believe it at a brew pub it's wild um (laughs) and it's it's you know our our chef um david cruz he's grew up in mexico city and he uh you know he grew up in a a family where his food is beautiful but that's not what his grandma was doing it was it was it was mole and and Mm -hmm. it was um chilaquiles and things like that so he's adapted to this um, that's where our menu progressively grew after David came in. Uh, we want to celebrate his Mexican heritage. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, had some of these like, oh, confit, I've never heard of this. I'll learn that. And over time, we've kind of mixed with his background and his oh. history. Well, whatever time you put into it, I know it takes a while mm-hmm. and it's expensive, but I ate it Saturday night and then I texted Brian and Nick well today and I'm like, after the podcast, I need those confit <laughs> yeah, wings going. again. Yeah. So we're going back because they're the best yeah. wings I've ever had. Oh, um, hands that. down amazing yeah. and the service a uh, shout out to brandy i think she's one of your servers yeah been there three years and i uh, nice. wanted to give her a shout out Brandy's nice. awesome. the culture yeah. and the staff and everything yeah. was just it always is but it was, it was company awesome. culture is you don't get all this without the focus that you know i consider company culture like the ocean and the tides are the ebbs and flows of the cycles um That's great and you want to you want to be able to allow it to flow um but but give it what it needs when it needs it and don't do anything when it doesn't. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and that all sounds so easy. Yeah. Uh, good luck. if you're Yeah, doing exactly. It. Yeah. It's so not this easy. all started in the way you're, I mean, the, the avenues and all the being a business owner and, and what you're talking about with the food. But this all started from beer, right? Yeah. You wanted to make I did. beer, right? I you wanted, did. Yep. That was it. And, it, you, and that Kickstarter, there was food in the back of your head, right? But mm-hmm. it was about the beer. So yeah. So talk about that. What was the inspiration there? Yeah, 2008 was a big year for craft beer. It went from I don't know the numbers, but I would just guessing it went from 400 to 850, 900 breweries in 2008. So that's when a lot of people caught on. That's when you're, you'd see the first um, mega store, you know, the Total Wine. Um, but you'd also you'd catch a, a handle of Firestone Walker or something like that. At you know, it was like oh my mm-hmm. gosh, they got craft beer, and yeah. it just was a household name. And then a show came out. Um, a uh, brewery called Dogfish Head had a show mm-hmm. called Brewmasters, and and you just got to see um, a side of business that wasn't ever portrayed. Um, I'm a massive Warren Buffett fan, um, but I wouldn't call Warren Buffett exciting or fun. Um, it was a way to express yourself, ex- especially for people like me who didn't go to college. I, I didn't have a chance. I I own a semi-successful window cleaning business but that was just to pay for gas money to go backpacking to be honest uh my wife would uh she would agree with that and and, uh, and really would just to go back like when you came out here in 06 was it yeah, like oh uh, two oh two i mean yeah. it was just like i want to just move to arizona there was no 
plan yeah. or you know when I moved here, I moved to Gilbert and Elliot, and I had never heard of Gilbert. I had a, my mm-hmm. only roommate, only person I knew here lived there, and Luis Gonzalez was opening a little place called Gonzo. Oh yeah, and, <laughs> yeah. And I didn't feel like that was ever gonna work. This no. little town's never gonna be anything, <laughs> and now it's Postino. Yeah, and, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it, it's. I think the the biggest win for me um, is. I'm a part of a th- to, to to like summarize. I'm a part of a growing industry that now all talking back then, especially in 08 with the, the craft beer mm-hmm. movement, we were still so segregated from each other, and now we're all talking. I wish we did this yeah. earlier, mm-hmm. but yes, beer was yeah. the impetus. Yeah, the real true impetus moment was actually a wilderness sign in the Chiricahua Mountains. It's oh. the yeah. well, it's not in this shirt. It's the it's this shape. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I. St- might have borrowed it from the Iconic. federal government. Iconic yeah. Arizona. Yeah. Federal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're not listening. Yeah. So we're safe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if they are, they're like, well, we're never shape. cool. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah, I saw the sign and said, oh my gosh, yeah, past this point, um, Congress and, and the government actually got something completely right here. Signed in 1964, 60 years ago this, this year. And it said, these lands are to be unkempt untrammeled by humans and it just hit me that this imaginary line implies to a lot of things even in your own mind you have a wilderness that's that's meant to be wild in your own mind and i had a craft beer and i sat at the edge of a overlook and it just the magic happens you just get on the carpet and ride and yeah you know who, that's that's the true impetus. Yeah, and who were the inspirations at that time in Arizona? I'm trying to think of who. Andy owned. Ingram. Okay. Uh, he owns Four Peaks. Four Peaks. There yeah, you go. yeah. Okay. Um, All right. Andy yeah. and Randy and okay. Jim. They, they're they're kind of the forefathers of craft beer in Arizona. In Arizona. And there were many before them, but they were the okay. ones who kind of said, "We're going to make a real business." Mm-hmm. Um, and they did, and they 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 were one of the mentor groups that kind of said, "Hey." You're new. Here's what to expect. Is Kilt Lifter kind of the beer that put Arizona on the map? Yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, Hop Knot, their Hoppy Hop Knot, was yeah. the Hoppy IPA was, I think, the first head turner though. Kilt Lifter is the first one that the masses right. understood mm-hmm. the brand, but Hop Knot came out and everyone, went, what's this? And that was right when hops were farmers in the Pacific Northwest were going, I'm gonna grow a bunch of these things, mm-hmm. <laughs> and all of these brewers opening. Yeah. We created a burgeoning, uh, brand new market. So, you know, 2008 through 12 was my four years. Now, I wasn't exactly primed to start a brewery and be uh, busy. So, my partner, my business partner Patrick, mm-hmm. he brewed at Santan Brewing Company and learned the hard, the hardships. Gotcha. And they were the fastest growing brewery, I believe, in America in like 2011. So he was ready for some action. A little, cool. a little too much. Knees learned a lot too. You know, you don't need to grind. Yeah. So that's kind of the yeah. It, it was all the rage. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? What happened? There had to be. Something. I mean, our dads drank Miller Lite. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And and and, and I did listen PBR to like, and yeah. Sam Adams. I think is one of the pioneers that kind of like exploded. Where it's like for me, like mm-hmm. at back then. It didn't taste good because everything, like you said, my dad drank was Bud Light, <laughs> Natural Light, you know, like just those like just yeah. hearty beers like Natural Light. And so when <laughs> Sam Adams came on the scene, it was like, and it was kind of an acquired Ooh. taste. But then you kind of like get to like, yeah, yeah first the first couple of sips yeah. aren't that great. And then you get to like it. And yeah. I feel Same, yeah. like that was probably early 2000s. And yeah. then mm-hmm. Sierra know, Nevada, though, was 80. Sierra Nevada. Sierra Nevada. That's so right. Think okay. about we think okay. we're, we're 11 oh, years wow. in. We're like touting. Them. Yeah. It's Sierra Nevada's uh, wow. 1983. So if you ever got your hands on a Sierra Nevada Pale, you, you thought it was the worst thing you ever had. <laughs> yeah. Until you found out it was cool. And then all of a sudden, your taste... Like beer in general. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like that you're, first sip, you're like... Ugh. Yeah, your taste threshold yeah. becomes yeah. adapted to these, yeah. these, these farm-raised ingredients. Yeah. But what? But what, was there... Did something happen? The zeitgeist is what it is. Yeah. Why, okay. why are burritos so popular? They were never in Mexico. They, San Diego, you know, there's there's a couple burrito shops there that claim that they were the first. It, you know, you why, are, why is Mexican food so popular? Mm-hmm. The zeitgeist is what it is. Yeah. You don't know yeah. how. I, yeah. It was a lot of things. And I've yeah. pulled it apart in my mind. Uh, it's, it's 
it's a lot of the right moment, but there was a villain in Bud Miller Coors mm-hmm. who was the, vi- the villain. Yeah. Yep. A shared enemy. Yeah. 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 And now a lot of people are acting like that. It's really funny. They're yeah. selling their businesses yeah. and joining the <laughs> evil empire. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, I won't speak for myself in the future anymore because I've seen so many people I trust sell their business oh, wow. and, yeah. and go, huh. Four Peaks is, mm-hmm. is one. Didn't mm-hmm. they Four Peaks go to... Yeah, and I won't comment on it because mm-hmm. I can't... I, I can't make a decision. No, I can't absolutely. judge a decision. Yeah. No, um, I just won't be doing it anytime soon. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I don't know what it's like to have kids who, and, and janitors mm-hmm. you can't pay, and you know people don't have four hundred one ks after twenty five years in business, and then someone slaps a check on the table and yeah. says you can take care of these people. Well, and sometimes I think you can't. Um, you know that you can't. You have something special, and you can't scale it the way somebody else might be able to. Yeah. To mm-hmm. to have it be a brand that more people can enjoy. So yeah, no. Yeah. No knock on them. I still love an Eighth Street Ale, mm-hmm. and yeah, but um, yeah, that's mm. cool. Well, we know. we wrote it in the code to not be able to grow. Um, the downtown location is our fast, rapid growth, and we made we made it so we had governors based on you know. Uh, there's a brewery. I we have a lot of friends in Chicago. There's a brewery called Three Floyds, and they're in, over in uh, Munson. Gumball Head. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we learned from breweries like that about growth and saw their big facilities. And, and, then, and then went, wow, what are those semis pulling up? That's our sales team. We said, okay, we're, never, we're not that smart. <laughs> and, and so we're never going to be able to do all this. But we had a, you know, that food side of things and people sitting down with that you know, four by four area that they're in with their family. Mm-hmm. That's what we know very well. Um, where growth of a company, you're going to have to expedite everything. Um, everything becomes exponential, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and, and we, you know, in a kitchen, there's a lot of brown skin people who don't get paid as much as the front and you go, I don't like that. So we can slowly move towards fixing some of these industry wide issues if we slowly grow. And there were times when we would get called out, like, you know, why aren't you opening a new one in the West side yeah. or why don't you do this more? And, you know, a lot of that advice I got was do what you know, the best mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you know how to do well, it. Well, I was at the downtown one. Me and my wife went down there to do the art walk. Yeah. And I went, wait a second. Yeah. What? It, what? And the big out. Have you been yet? No, I haven't been to that oh, one yet. Man. I've seen it's it. Like I haven't been in there outdoor, yet. big yeah. outdoor, and there's a bar outside. Yeah. yeah. And there was a guy like playing guitar that day. Yeah. And I'm just like, I would get fucking hammered right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I, I would stay you would here. Have no control. And I would. The art but walk my, would you know, not my wife's, my wife's like, we, you know, and I, I, I'm like, I'm like, oh, I got to. Uh, <laughs> You're okay. our favorite customer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that building that you saw feels so natural, but it was a, it was a neighborhood that was always touted as the next big neighborhood. I heard Austin and it's never going to be that. It can't be. Um, it shouldn't be, but it was a black asphalt parking lot with barbed wire, um, razor wire, and a building that was a uh, um, wholesale florist that no one knew was in there. It was nothing. And uh, a really wonderful gentleman named Chris Osborne, may he rest in yes. peace, uh, he had been working on us, um, or on us and with us, and we had a deal on Grand Avenue next to Tuft & Needle, and it was almost just almost perfectly done. Um, Chris was going through some inner turmoil and because of that, the deal fell through and it just sucked. And Chris knew he he owed us. So he found us that building on second and Roosevelt. And he's like, that one didn't work out, but guys, I found this one behind razor, you know, razor wire. It's (laughs) going to, it's going to be perfect. It's going to be perfect. Just as good. love visionaries. Yeah. He, he's Mm -hmm. like, I'll let you do the vision side of things. You're smart enough to see it. And Chris saw it and we, you know, now we, we just try to keep up with the times down there. I mean, it, it's 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 almost yeah, it's, it's it's like it, it, it's like a game when you're when you when you're live. It's like go time is eleven o'clock, <laughs> and you better have your team and your defense and your offense in yeah. order. You better have your coordinators knowing where the action is. And I again, I don't know that I'm the right guy for the job to lead all of this stuff, but it, it's a cool location that we got right, and we're gonna wait a while. We do have another building we're working on. Mm-hmm. But oh, awesome! You, you just. Yeah slow play it and so how do i uh i like i like light beer i always have like light beer great 
how, uh, and then uh, everything, the IPAs went nuts and triple IPAs and yeah. quadruple this. And my friends are waiting in line at Three Floyds. Uh, like yeah. literally, I don't know if you guys ever heard of Three Floyds. I hadn't heard of it. Gumball Head mm-hmm. is like their, their, like one of their beers. You can get it now in a lot of places in Chicago. But every year they release this one that they dunk in the Maker's Mark uh, plastic, you know, the Maker's the, Mark the, plastic yeah, the, thing, yeah, the, the yeah. red yeah. cap the candle thing. wax. And my friends yeah, are yeah, waiting yeah. overnight for this beer. And yeah. there's a whole secondary market where they're like buying and selling and trading it. Yeah. And I'm like, wow. Ah, I just want a lager beer, yeah, like, right? That. But That's but great. but let's like. But how do I, like you said, it, it it wasn't cool until someone said this is cool. All of my friends think I'm like a bitch when it comes to this. <laughs> that I'll drink this I, like other I don't stuff. Think you're a bitch. Like, <laughs> but I, I give me a Camp Light, I'm good. So Camp, camp light, light. I'm glad oh, you brought man. that up. Camp Light was a response to a lot of this. See, brewers don't want those beers. They don't want the big beers. They're almost tired of making them all the time to try to like dangle out this this carrot for you know this massive beer and and they do pay the bills and there is a beautiful side to those beers but when every brewery opened up to mimic three floyds and and russian river brewing company and all yeah. this pliny the elder yeah, yeah that's yeah. russian river yeah that's yeah and Vinny's a good friend of mine and again a mentor call him up and say what did you do here this in your career it's funny these these sage people, they all have done these things. They're like, yo, yeah. this is what it's going to be like in a recession. And, right. But um, we all we saw Camp Light as a way to get back to the impetus on a trail. You know, you're not going to take an 11% stout. You can, and we have. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that we have. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but it's much easier to take a beer that you, your body can handle. I'm a turn into a big lifestyle guy. So I believe you should be putting in your body what your body can handle, what it's trained for. So Camp Light's a lot more effective cognitively for the things that we'd want to do. And then again, at a bar, having a Camp Light and food, you're, you're, you're still enjoying a craft brewery, but you're, you're able to probably maybe not drive home, but you're able to be a part of a, a social, like a, a higher level experience mm-hmm. instead of just drinking seven IPAs. And a lot of the issues come, came out of that. Our industry yeah. ran oh. into an alcoholism issue that was pretty big. And you well, realize yeah. we were dangling this yeah. big carrot in front of everybody. I don't know how, like, I can't drink more than, like, one and a half IPAs. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I want to. You're lucky. And you I love to. the one. Oh, yeah, you want to be a douchebag <laughs> and act like you like it. I do. I like the first one. It just feels heavy. Oh, and so that's heavy. why I always, that's why I always do the flights there. Because I, I like that little amount. Yeah. But then I got to yeah. get that camp light in there, too. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, <clears throat> my story from one of the first times going into Arizona wilderness, Julie and I, no seats available, two seats at the bar. So we saddle mm-hmm. up to the bar. We're having our, you know, food, our beer. And I got one of the lighter beers, of course, cause I'm mm-hmm. like that. And I go to the restroom and I come back and there is just a massive man with the biggest beard ever <laughs> and an IPA sitting in my seat, talking to my wife, hitting on my wife. <laughs> And I just had to let him. <laughs> yeah, because you had your little light lager. I had my little light, light and I'm like, uh, you guys have fun. I'll just be waiting it outside. Of, it wasn't one of my staff members. No, okay. it could have been. It might have been. You needed your mustache. Yeah. No mustache. I mean, that he was Coming just so hot. much more of a man than me. I just John, had to just Jonathan's like, oh, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> Resident. No. Oh man, Resident is that Raj. your brother? Yeah. <laughs> That's great. So then, what'd you do? I mean, I kind of just let him my beer. What are you doing? I kind of just let him have a conversation, <laughs> and then I don't know. I think I like uh, tapped him on his broad shoulder. Excuse me. Said, "Excuse me, sir. <laughs> uh, fees ready. This is my yeah. wife. <laughs> my I ordered. I ordered a ready. salad. Yeah. 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 Is that How much awesome? beer did you drink when you started a this? Lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The problem for me is when it became free. Um, the industry <laughs> became a party for sure. And Getting it's, high on your own supply. Yeah. And yeah. Others. Yeah. yeah. Uh, cocktails and wine killed me though. Mm-hmm. Um, but in in the beginning, it was everything was new, everything was exciting. You know, I can only imagine what it was like to be in, you know, in the fifties and in cars, you know, and, and shoes. Look at Hoka right now. Yeah. All of these new exciting mm. things. Well, what happens is we're just capitalism wears itself out. And and so in the beginning there was a lot of meetups that were very necessary for the social lubrication. Mm-hmm. It was imbibing. Mm-hmm. It mm. was. And uh, yeah, there was a lot of beer in the beginning, and everything was fitting right into place 
you, you know, people were able to gain popularity like that. And you were the coolest. We were rock stars at times. It's crazy. Uh, mm -hmm. Things that we didn't see coming were happening. We were all, I went to Europe four times a year. What, what's the point of that? But it was part of that, that zeitgeist. Yeah. It mm -hmm. was, you went, the European beer festivals wanted you. Brazil, they flew us down, put us up and said, come port our beer festival just to have your name wow. on it. Japan, um, Faroe Islands, all these places around the world. Wow. So yes, we had a wow. lot of beer. Um, and that created a very, you know, kind of a dark part of this industry when you don't, under, again, without wisdom of a, um, an older sage saying, hold on, here's what's really going on. You think this, but let me show you what this is. Mm -hmm. Having free beer all the time, yeah. having access to the microphone all the time as a, you know, the owner and founder of a company it's not what you think. So right. to answer that, yeah. you know, a little more metaphysically, if you will, there was a lot of, I had yet to be the butterfly. It was still caterpillar <laughs> face. So then you, yeah. but you stopped drinking beer. I you did. drinking. Yeah. So I, so that journey is a different topic. Um, and it could take a long time. So be prepared for that. But yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> or it could go quickly, but yeah. long story short, yeah. 2019, I had enough. Um, I didn't know COVID was coming. So no one did. But no. when I, 2019, my birthday, I said, I'm going to take my last drink. I made a very big decision, a very difficult one, but I did not see an end in sight. And I didn't, I would have never known that COVID could have either killed me or I could have gotten stronger. Who knows? But being alone with all the energy that I have, mm -hmm. um, it probably was meant to be, you know, maybe a little spiritual aspect in there. Uh, probably most likely a spiritual aspect in there. Yeah. And I just made a decision. My wife was confused at first. I hit it. I didn't tell anyone. You didn't um, tell anyone that you weren't just drinking wife, anymore? Yeah, my business partner, my wife. And I slowly trickled it out. But I was like, it's almost yeah. like coming out of the closet. At, yeah. As it not, it, it was, in your industry, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But as an entrepreneur, that's what I was first, mm -hmm. you know, business-wise and a husband first. And I wasn't doing both of those very well. Uh, and it was a decision less about alcohol and more about myself. Mm -hmm. And Steve-O, the, the guy who, you know, he, he was in jackass and destroyed his life for years at the, at the, you know, entertainment of others. He had said something that struck with me that alcoholism isn't the issue. It's you. Right. <laughs> so everyone's relationship is so different. You know, my, my relationship to myself was so bad. So yeah, stopping drinking was a really big way for me to celebrate me. But that was it. That's a journey. That's not something you just stop doing. You don't right. just quit and go, all right, what's next? It's it's always a battle. You're yeah. always going uphill. You're, and I like going uphill. That's that's my goal. So, yeah, uh, COVID hit, and all of a sudden I said, oh, gosh, I have a lot of energy. My business is going to – everyone, I don't know what you thought, but it didn't feel like we were going to succeed. No. We're delivering Scary. beer mm -hmm. uh, to people's houses. Thank you for everyone who supported us during that time because it actually did save – many restaurants. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm going to go back to my roots of photography mm -hmm. and um, hit all 90 wilderness areas and put all of my time, money and effort into this book project. Um, so that's what I replaced all of that travel and party vibe with. And it was just chaos. I'd go back to the business and Patrick and I were, canning beer you know we were doing things that we hadn't done in years and uh then i'd go out and climb a mountain sleep on it take in the wilderness document it write a you know a, a journal um and i just said i hope somebody picks this up one day and then lo and behold arizona highways magazine awesome. said hmm we like this this idea and it this year's the 60th anniversary of the wilderness act so it all came together and wow. Kind of the path that I followed seemed to be the right one. What's your What's the Instagram for your photography? Jonathan Buford Photography. Jonathan Buford Photography. It's pretty incredible. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. I, I do got to talk to you about um, backpacking. So I've been obsessed with backpacking for three months now. Oh wow! But I've never been backpacking before. Yeah, no. <laughs> 
Nobody knows it because I haven't, dun- actu- dun- 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 I haven't actually done news. it yet. Her wife was taught by a guy at my bar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah he, told like, her, he told her all about it. Yeah, Roger taught you how to backpack. <laughs> Roger. <laughs> Stop being a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had separate tents. They were over there. Do but, more um, squats. <laughs> I, uh, I, no, I haven't done I I want to do it. And I say I'm set, obsessed because I've watched a lot of YouTube videos on backpacking. But I like I want to do it. Like I want to be in nature. But I I'm not a camper. I don't. No, I haven't done that. Stuff. We've all talked about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But now I want to. Aren't there? So the, my main reason for bringing him on the podcast <laughs> yes. was I need him to teach me how to camp and how to backpack. Like, what do you bring? How I'm do you the, do it? Yeah. Uh, what if there's inclement I, weather? Like, yeah. <laughs> he was in the snow a I couple only days go to ago. Inclement weather. That's the new project I'm on. Storm breaks. Oh, my he said he's almost disagree. died out there Uh-oh. before. <laughs> I want that energy. Mm. Do you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't um, want that. But. Has that ship sailed for him? Yes or no? No. Oh, no, 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 shit. Okay. Talk to me about God, it. This God, is like, now he's going to want us to go. I think the most dangerous. Place on planet Earth is your couch, and don't get me wrong, I, I, I love being at home with my wife. Mm-hmm. I love whatever terrible show she's watching. Um, I'll <laughs> watch yes. too. Yes, but I yes. think that that is a facade that was built by Rockefeller um, in the in the Gilded Age. The idea of you must be a servant of your own home. When nature is perfect, there is no better place to find out what real is than in nature that's untouched. And we don't have a lot left. Um, so when you go backpacking, what you're going to, you know, establish your, your, your rhythm. I'm sure everyone goes to bed at night and knows how you brush your teeth and those things. The rhythm, that's yeah. what it, backpacking will become. But the first dozen trips takes a while. It's like snowboarding or skiing. It, it doesn't feel like you'll ever get good at this. Um, and and you always remember that more than anything. That's the best mm-hmm. part of the, the yeah. beginning. You'll you'll remember the trail, the smells, the first sign. Uh, you'll remember when you thought three miles was far, and it is. Yeah. But then you'll go thirty or thirteen, and you'll right. you'll realize it's a journey all the unto its own. But you also. REI is going to love this. You also go bankrupt over this. So yeah. be careful. Yes. You'll peruse REI right. and yeah. they'll offer you a credit card and you'll be like, that's smart. And, and <laughs> that's, that's, Seems like a great yeah, idea. Is, okay, I get points back to buy more things. Cool. And and the gear thing is, I'm sure on those YouTube videos you're learning, the gear thing is oh, yeah. quite... A, but uh, I'm in this stage where I want it all. I want to go to REI. I want to sign up for a credit card. Buy it. Want... Be comfortable with it. Yeah. Buy the minimalism thing's okay, but you, when you have everything's fitting perfectly and that inclement weather comes yeah. and you're just like, watch this. I'm all set. It's the like best. God. Yes, I'm doing it. You don't Why pick you this one day? up. It's only a, it's a four ounce jacket. It fits right in your thing. Yeah. It, it, down to down 30 feathers. degrees. Down to 30 yeah. degrees yeah. you can yeah. go in this thing. Like, yep. And then if it's below 30, put this other layer on that was $200 made of a, a NASA approved <laughs> fabric. Yeah. 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 I'm all in on it. Yeah. It's got to be cheaper than some of my other devices. So, <laughs> cheaper uh, than golf. So talk us it through this. We enough. lost Tim. Yeah. Where you're gone. What, okay, what, what happens? You just drive up the 60, park, and walk, or what I are you going to do? Yesterday, or uh, two days, two days ago, or you know, yesterday, uh, Peralta Trail and the Superstitions, and okay. I drove out there and passed some cows mm-hmm. on the way, and it had just rained. It was beautiful. I did what I thought was pretty far for me, 5.4 miles, I think. Down Peralta Trail, and I felt mm-hmm. like I was in heaven. Like yeah. I've never seen. I've hiked in. Uh, Oregon, Hawaii, like I love Arizona being a native and to see the desert look mm-hmm. like that, like it, like it, it was did. amazing on St. Patty's day, how green it was. It yeah. was like this, it this was. could be the Emerald Isle. Yeah. Where it I really was, was yesterday was as green as I've seen it. And yeah. you, again, that's no one had to do anything. No. no one planted these things. The sun, you didn't do anything to get it. To, the rain no. forms itself. So what are we actually doing? You know, right. when we're forcing all of this stuff. Uh, it's all there, and so you you'll get a, a new sense on who you are out there. I'd encourage it for everybody. Yeah. I, so I, is that considered hiking? That what was you hiking. Did? Yeah. But and the now, backpacking is you where you want bring to spend the, the night. Spend the, but then somebody sent me a, a video the last time they did Peralta Trail of a snake going by them, and then I'm like, okay, I'm out on backpacking <laughs> now. I'm never doing that. But in serious, <laughs> that's like fun stuff. that's my biggest fear. And my son, who he's into it too, Camden wants to go with me. But he's like, I am just a little bit of freaked out of animals. So does, is well, that... Well, the, the, okay, so I have 22 years in this, but I go harder than most. So I, I have to preface that. But uh, I, there, I have a friend 
he's a great mural artist. Um, and he's from the Tahano Autumn um, tribe and grew up in the Salt Pima area. Okay. So he kind of goes back and forth between the, the Salt River Pima tribes. Um, and things like snakes are the protectors of their stories. Uh, animals are, are to them, they're sacred in a certain way. So you start to see things differently. They're part of the ecosystem. They're not there to attack anything. Right. They're protecting the ecosystem. We need that. Absolutely. So you go enough and, and you'll encounter a mountain lion um, and you'll realize that mountain lion, I'm in its home and I have to act accordingly. And you just start to see things uh, a lot more. You know, more you're less important, which right. I find I find to be. Is that you? It's you good, all play baseball. I'm reminder. fascinated by baseball. I mean, everyone has their part to play. Anyone who jumps out of line to do something out of the ordinary, it, you're gonna screw it up for the team. Right. You know, mm-hmm. if a shortstop wants to yep. be something else, that's you're you're, and that's what nature is. You're a part of this this thing. Also, yeah. it's hard. It's it's it, and it can be harder anytime you want yeah, it to be harder. Right, yeah. You can pick a bigger mountain. I love that. Yeah, I love to go harder. Um, you guys are gonna notice weird Tim right <laughs> doing things as soon as my calves recover because <laughs> they aren't okay today. All right, but, I, I'll I'll admit something. <laughs> yes, ooh, I have recently started to consider this. My neighbor goes down the Havasupai up at the rim of the Grand Canyon. Don't ask me where they go, but they go they go yeah. down, they backpack down. That's what there's that's a, it. There's a beach. They fish for trout. They eat the trout. Like they pay college students to bring down their 30 packs or their cases of beer. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um there's like you can hire a donkey to bring it down and they go do this and they've now they've done four different ones. And mm-hmm. every time they come back and talk mm-hmm. about it it sounds so awesome. And then yeah. I go, show me the pictures. And I go, this looks like it's fake because like of how beautiful yeah. it is. Yeah. And then I go, the stairs were nailed into the rock. Yeah. And then you went down them. And the, yeah, it's fine. I'm like, mm. is it? <laughs> Nick, well, that one little part, you just have to repel in the one little part. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Nick, like, let's do I mean, a podcast yeah. live. You and me, have a soup pie. Seriously. Three so, days, three so, days. so the more they talk about it, the more it intrigues me. So it leads to my question. Like, what's the one that you go to Tim now? All right, Tim, you've never done this before. Okay. Man, if you did this for a night or two nights, your life would change and you would be forever committed. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's like favorite child. Just kind of talk mm. here, um, which you named a restaurant after one, so that might yeah that might be your favorite. Child. Damn, yeah. that's his grandmother though. Yeah, that's his yeah, grandmother. It's my grandmother's. Oh, it's, yeah. it's my daughter's. It is his daughter. Too. No, it is. Wink, wink. Sure. Yeah. 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 Sure, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, okay. So tomorrow, this is good timing. Tomorrow, we are taking a staff member out for his first ever backpack. He won at the Christmas party a backpack and gets to you know choose if he wants to go with me or not because some people are inspired want to want to go. Some people say that's no way. Mm-hmm. Um, and he won it and said, I want to go. So we're leaving tomorrow. And it's in the middle of the superstition wilderness. Everyone, generally everyone has seen it. It's weaver's needle. It's sticking mm-hmm. right out. It's a big thumb. Yep. There's a backpack that loops that, that I would recommend. So it, it's, you go Peralta yeah, to Fremont. Yeah. 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 And, and you can go right at the base of weaver's needle, wake up, you know, especially on a full moon, you'll see something, feel something. That would be one that's a starter for the life changing experience. And then as you go further, you know, there's a lot of life changers in the state sleeping at the top, um, near the top of Humphrey's peak in Flagstaff. You can't sleep at the top, but at 11,400 feet, you can backpack right at that line and wake up and hit the peak for sunrise. Ugh. That's a that's a very classic Arizona moment that yeah. I would recommend for everyone. And then Cabeza Prieta is in southern Arizona. Um, that's the largest wilderness uh, in Arizona, and it's the the last the last desert in Arizona. And just waking up in the sand <laughs> of this desert with with silence, just coyotes running around you. Um, and the other coyote running around you, unfortunately, too. <laughs> All of them. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's it's that kind of area right now. But um, it's you know I can name a lot yeah. of them, but those are three that I think really get you started. Humphrey would be one that you yeah would want to get ready for, um, even just a hike. But it it you should touch the highest point yeah. in your state. You know. Yeah, I think we're. We're doing that one this summer Good. for sure, just as a Check hike. Check the weather. But then I was I want to mm-hmm. do have a supai is like my like goal that I want to get to, but that's a three day one. Yeah. But 
all the my YouTube that I've been watching, like you got to do one overnight first and just check your gear and know yeah. how to do everything. So maybe that's the yeah. Have a soup pie is a lottery, and I can yeah. give you a lot of Grand Canyon ones that would be less crowds. But have a soup is just one of those classics. Like if you decide to do it, you'll enjoy it a lot. Um, right. But there are there are even better secrets. Okay. Well, yeah, like uh, the it. one that they Whoa. talk about is Jackass or something. Yeah. I don't know. They just did Jack- that one, Jack- Jackass. It's it's on the rim up there somewhere. I don't know why I don't know that one, but yeah, it sounds great. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. They, yeah, just they, by they the name. yeah. I mean, they do they do know how to get me though, dude. You just freeze this. You know, we freeze the steak and put it in our backpacks, and by the time you're down there that night, it's like ready to go. We build the fire, whatever. I'm like, yeah, now I can do That's this. Like, this shit. I yeah. can do They're this because free- you go to REI and you can get freeze dried food and you add water to it and you're yeah. like having beef stroganoff or uh, I, I'm a vegetarian, so Indian korma. Oh, and it's like wow, this is incredible. Yeah. Talk about that. Are you vegetarian or vegan? Or vegetarian. Vegetarian. No, when did you support. start with that? Uh, I made a decision based on um, the overconsumption of meat, mm-hmm. and I wanted to contribute to that. So I uh, no other political reason or any or even dietary. Other dietary. Than- no, um, I'll eat meat if it if it's part of the deal. Like these wings. If I'm gonna, tr- you know, someone's gonna make a new rub for it. I have no problem. I just I saw so much going to. You know, we use Arizona grass raised beef. And they're roaming, uh, to switch subjects here, but they're mm-hmm. roaming the Bradshaw Mountains on six different ranches. They're eating the um, the grasses and shrubs that turn into wildfires because we've overhunted in that range. Um, and so they're doing their they, work. Their work, yeah. their ruminant mm-hmm. animal work. And, and so they only drink the waters naturally. They don't touch any grain. And the facility where they process that, they own as well. It's a USDA-approved facility. So it's one boutique beef company i love it but when you go see a cow taken i eat i just i responded by saying hey i can play a part and i just i'm in love with eating fiber it's crazy Mm -hmm. with beans and legumes and nuts and things like that i have no problem with that um i do own a beef you know i'm a i'm I'm a i very well aware that i uh own a brewery and um a place that sells a lot of burgers and chicken yeah but it's that's that's what i love about life it doesn't you can intermix with all these people you know it's like christians and muslims can hang out in the same room it's not that big of a deal same you know there's so many different takes on that that i feel good about Um, i think that's why you're so inspirational to me because having kids that are 27 24 and 21 and all very environmentally conscious Mm -hmm. and they're so proud of what we're doing with some burrows and isabels but very concerned with our carbon footprint and they've Mm -hmm. actually been we've worked a lot in the last few years of like how can we do this better and you know it's provided a great life for us it's provided college tuition all that stuff which is nice but can we we're not going to not do it but can we do it in a better way and i think that's what you're doing like you could be yeah you could close your brewery and say no now we're not you know all the water and all the cows are fine now but like that's not the answer it's doing it the best way you can i think uh deeply uh, Mm -hmm. on these backpacks another great thing about backpacking you'll find a new an active meditation in many ways um the sun's gonna eat earth one day it's gonna explode and become a super dwarf and it's all gone so we're not actually protecting what we think we're protecting i don't believe that we're saving planet earth i think we're we're, we'll die well before planet earth well now that i'm not saying you know i care greatly about the things you just suggested, right. the conservation. I just think stop being so stupid is the lowest hanging fruit. <laughs> it's 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 the again the couch is the most dangerous place because the idea of not moving is and not being part of nature is the antithesis of humans. Right. And there's nothing that can prove it otherwise. It it it's meant to be a place of shelter. And so we've built I live in the suburbs. And I, I suffer greatly because of this. We don't even know who built our home. It's just it's a lot of uh, stress for me. So how I can control what I control is lead a team, be part of a great team, to try to strive one building block at a time to make those decisions. When we went from um, one beef ranch to another, it was years of, of struggle to get there. And then we had Cisco step up and say, we want to help. You're actually our, one of our biggest uh, burger makers. And Cisco, based, I think, in Houston, is a 
probably a fortune i don't know maybe 500 yeah, one of them uh, yeah. no a lot better a fortune like 100 yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and, and so they're billion. sitting yeah. 60, we have suits billion. sitting with us saying these things <laughs> and they said i think we think that you're the part of the future the way you're running a restaurant and now anytime we can piss this go off i love it i, I don't mean that literally <laughs> but i like when they go mm. They're making their own sauces. Oh, gosh, they're not buying that sweet and sour. Ugh. Right. They're yeah. going to Mary's yeah. chicken. you got to figure this out. I love that. They okay. should squirm. Yeah. The gas company should squirm. <laughs> and we, as a society, have the ability to do that. We can yeah. make big companies squirm by making better decisions. So we, one building block at a time, go at you know Sanagua Malt, the base of our beer. We were worked with the Nature Conservancy. And the, you know they're a, uh, I'd call them a large charitable organization um, based on they buy their main priorities to buy plots of land, create an easement, and then sell that to someone who will fulfill the duties of that easement based on conservation. So a farm that will work on conservation. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have a farmer growing alfalfa and corn, um, and we said. Nature Conservancy essentially said, and this is where the watermelon will come in because we talked yeah. about this pre-show. They said, hey, here's a list of things that we could grow that would be better for the river. Now, the Verde River is one of the greatest natural things um, in, in the state. It's, it's, it's as good as anything that Mother Earth can give us. It's free water flowing from an aquifer uh, north of Chino. Um, out of nowhere. I love it that, as he just said, the Verde River. And I, in my intro, I said the Verde River. The Verde. And I'm well, the Mexican. Yeah. <laughs> the Verde River. The Verde's what the... the Verde. Yeah. It, 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 yeah. You're good either way. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's up there. It's Verde. Okay. For sure. Um, but that is a gift given to the state. And the channels going to farms are larger than the river. 2,200 wells were being drilled, and I think it's going to go upwards of 5,000 to 8,000 drills underground. Magically, you don't know that they're being drilled. And so that river is dying, and it's it's akin to taking an artery from your heart and yeah. expecting you have good health. So one of the projects they saw was the farms growing less water-intensive crops, and alfalfa is at the highest level Um and again, I don't want to badmouth alfalfa growing. Some people do it well. But it was going to horse feed, not even human consumption. Right. And then a lot yeah. of times they couldn't sell it because monsoon would come and ruin it. We're going, what a weird... Farming is hard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and so we switched first over a small plot to watermelon. Why watermelon? Because it is a drip head irrigated system. And so you can see how much water is going each root. And the Nature Conservancy essentially could get a mathematical equation on how much water is being used, which is way better than flood irrigating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we make every single summer with the farmer, um, grown on you know drip irrigation system, ten thousand pounds of it, our watermelon goes. Wow. So it's a seasonal thing. If the if the freeze comes and we can't make it, we don't make it. We're not buying watermelon from anywhere else um, unless someone in Arizona steps up to the plate, which it's hard to grow watermelon. Uh, that so is that, interesting. I mentioned yeah. before the show that, yeah, we had somebody when I said John, Jonathan was coming on the the podcast today. They're like, tell them to bring back the watermelon beer. Every, every summer, yeah. every July is generally, and that's because the time that they're ready. Remember, it takes farmers to pick this, field workers to pick this. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of stakeholders. Mm-hmm. Delivery driver gets to us. We have to process that hours and hours and hours of processing. And then the brewers have to go from there, and then the sales team takes it from there, the restaurants and, and sales team. So a lot of stakeholders to make one beer happen. So bringing something back might not be as good for the environment as we think. I, if I were to go buy watermelon from you know Ohio, where I'm from, the trucks, the far, I don't get to see the process. Right. Yep. So that's why we don't bring it. But yeah. on Sanago Malt... Um, the malt side of it, barley, can't be... Sorry if I'm boring you with it. No, it's, it's fascinating. fascinating. <laughs> it's fascinating. Um, yeah. The malt side of it, you know, everyone's seen barley or wheat, whether you know it or not. It looks like grass, and it's got little kernels. And um, the barley side of it needs to be malted. So you can't just grow barley, send it to a baker or a brewery. It actually has to have a process where it opens its uh, this little layer, this endosperm layer, and it reveals its starch, all based on um, the sun and water. And so we've 
Malthouse has figured out how to kiln that. It opens it, and then that sugar is exposed for us to be able to brew with or bake yep. with. So the malt house is key. We said we can't grow barley. We saw that on the list, and we're like, that'd be great. But we'd have to send that malt to Austin, Texas um, to get malted. We did, and it right. was like, gosh, there's, I don't know, 5,000 unnecessary miles in between there, but it worked. I got some articles written about it. First ever all airs on a brewery, you know, all airs on a beer. We said, I don't know. And then a guy named Chip Norton shows up and says, Hey, I'm retired, but I have some money. I think I might start a malt house with a nature conservancy. And main investors, Pepsi and um, Intel and Microsoft, because they all wanted water rights for the future. They all wanted that river to flow because they have to cool their plants and more they can't if they don't invest in these rivers, the flow. Hence, you know, this this new um, plant up north. That's 80 million gallons, if I recall. I don't remember a week or whatever it is that to cool their plant. So they need water flowing yeah. in. So it turns yeah. out that this is a benefit for everybody. We plant the barley. The malt house slowly gets going. And it sucked. I'll be honest. Yeah. It was terrible. <laughs> we got bad malt. And we were going, fuck. This is, <laughs> this is hard. <laughs> We are. Yeah. We, we did could, everything right, yeah. other than the fact that it doesn't taste good. <laughs> How do, like, yes. what, like when you say soil it was bad. content and rain water um, elevation, all the things need to be. It's minutia, but it all needs to be perfect, and that's why the grain growers, the heritage grain growers in Canada, Idaho, Colorado, who traditionally uh, Wisconsin, who traditionally do this, they've been doing it for hundred plus years Mm -hmm. they have it down to a science the problem is they're destroying their soil Mm -hmm. they're they're tilling it they're it's Mm -hmm. becoming one giant dust bowl so we have a small farm here is doing a small scale learning the first year the protein content's too high things that are scientifically you know it's 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 not right and so our brewers are going oh god we're not getting the sugar content so you have this not sweet beer you know not right. enough for yeast to eat yeah. and we rode through it and rode through it. and then year three and four started to become successful and then now we have a pretty cool program with sonago mall and that's where the water so by switching that farm from alfalfa to barley yeah. it's 110 million gallons a year we've equated that minimal each pint of beer is 50 gallons of water that the verde did not have to flood irrigate an alfalfa field it, it's barley. wait say those numbers again uh, 50,000 50, gallons so 50 gallons of water per pint 50 of gallons beer. of beer per pint water per pint of water beer per pint that you're saving because we switched that plot of land over to barley instead of alfalfa Wow. wow. Yeah. And That's where's awesome. that? What, is that up north somewhere? It's or? right where the West Clear Creek hits um, the Verde River, which is Camp Verde area. Yeah. Okay. And there's just a small farm. It's, it's I think, 90 acres. It's not that big. So if you think about what we can do yeah. with a small farm. I love Ooh. it that Jake, our world-class uh, videographer, is here today because he also does the purchasing for some bros and Isabel's. Yeah. And I'm just watching him hang on every word. Never, and like, <laughs> never let go of that vegan... Tamale. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, his son's yeah. a vegan. So. Yeah, so that's yeah. right. Oh, that thing is life changing. <laughs> Wait, so uh, okay, so with all the research you've done with all this, and and the festivals and the mm. uh, the events and going to different um, craft brew, uh, who else is thinking like you? It, it, it feels like yeah, we, it, this feels unique. This feels yeah. like this is a total different game plan. Like, and I, I got to imagine like it's like two pronged. I got to imagine like. Colorado breweries different from a Chicago brewery from mm. a, a Japanese be. It brewery, should be. right? Should be like a different vibe to it. And you talked about just all the things that you're, all the stuff there, that's going there on. There are in your breweries head. out there. So uh, one of the good places to find out a, a group that I believe in right now is this Patagonia beer that we're talking about. So the clothing company um, Patagonia started by mm-hmm. Yvonne Chenard um, in '74. Uh, somehow it just hit 50 years, right? Cool. So anyone who's been in business for more than five seconds knows that 50 years is the things that we will hit and have to Mm -hmm. conquer are going to be incredible. Um, He wrote a book called Let My People Go Surfing. We read it and say, okay, we're doing some things wrong here. We're not Mm -hmm. we're not doing some things right would be a better way to put it. We could do more for our staff. We could do more for our product. Um, And so they. They became a North Star. Little did I know that they'd be calling me in a few years saying, hey, we're going to brew 
a Kernza logger. So that's a regenerative organic farming, and that's that's a different podcast. Don't don't Ooh. get me started there. <laughs> gotcha. That's the gold standard of farming. No yeah. tilling. The earth is going to sustain itself. You're not going to till it and disturb it and create dust. Um, you're going to let the the soil live. Uh, a movie right now out is called Kiss the Ground and then Common Ground's the follow up. Go go Kiss the ground. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Kiss the Ground and Common Ground are the follow Common Ground just came out the follow up and you'll you'll get a whole load of information what regenerative organic farming is. But Kernza is a perennial wheatgrass that doesn't need to be tilled. It falls down, the soils in, in the desert. Mm-hmm. You could not see rain all June and there's one regenerative organic farm in the state of Arizona called Oatman's Oatman Farms on the okay. Gila Bend. Mm-hmm. Only one. Okay. You go to their farm in July, hasn't rained in three months. Their fields are wet and there's fog in the morning. Swear to God, we buy a lot from Oatman. Wow. Really? Yeah, oh. you wanna, you wanna, I'll put you in touch with Oatman. Um, they make. They Why? Can, what what, yeah, what happened? What's, so, the, 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 so, so, exposed soil is to the radiation of sun yeah. is never supposed to be that way. So, you have a crop grow. And it's it's taking all of the nutrients that the soil's creating and this living mm. biome down there is is telling the roots, hey, I, I want you and you want me and symbiotic relationship. When that's stripped out with tilling, you're completely telling the soil that you don't love it or don't care about it. And it's exposed. So the hot boobs come mm-hmm. and boom, the top layer of soil is coming. At Oatman, they uh, do not till. And the, let's say, barley... Because they're growing barley for, wheat, uh, I'm sorry, wheat. They We have our first ever regenerative wheat beer coming out this Thursday uh-huh. with their um, regenerative organic wheat. It falls um, after harvest, no till, and it starts to lay on the soil. And then in between their weeds, even Bermuda grass, which is the enemy, they actually learn that it's not the enemy. It covers the soil, uh-huh. lets the roots uh-huh. live. And then all winter, those rains come, soaks up in the soil, and the mm-hmm. biome never gets killed. And that's a very summarized, very yeah. summarized that's version. So of interesting. Why isn't wow. anyone doing this then? Uh-huh. Watch Kiss the Ground and Common Ground, mm-hmm. and you'll find out more. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some racism involved. There's some. I mean, think about <laughs> yeah. think, think about who's what? pulling your your food. Yeah. Why we when we go to the grocery store and we want cheaper food, someone had to make it cheaper. Yeah. So big farms don't see the benefit of that. Mm-hmm. It regenerative organics harder because you're the stakeholders are focused on everyone is a stakeholder. You'll meet a farm hand again in Arizona, generally brown skinned, uh, most likely from Mexico or from mm-hmm. South America. They're a part of the regenerative organic system. You don't get that certification if you're an asshole. So your whole farm <laughs> system has yeah. to be kind of yeah. generally put in there. Well, other farms are getting mm-hmm. the cheapest labor possible to make mm-hmm. the food cheaper because the customer. At Safeway, want it cheaper, and right. and and no one cares if the apple was regenerative or not. They want the freaking apple. I I want the regenerative organic apple because it's protecting everything and everyone. It's downstream. Everyone's a stakeholder, and so at Oatman, you're gonna go out there and you're gonna meet. I've had to learn Spanish to talk with the farmers. Mm-hmm. Um, just to show them respect, they're growing yeah. our food. These are yeah. these are people <laughs> growing yeah. our food. So, I love it too. In the other yeah. podcast, uh, on our friend, good friend, the Delos podcast, you talked about like how everything you're doing, you're doing it your way. Mm-hmm. And you said on there, you're like, if we fail, but we fail because we're doing it our way, that's not a failure. Like we did, we did everything. Like yeah. if the cost of everything goes way high and you can't, you're not going to buy cheaper stuff or whatever. You're just going to keep doing what you're doing and either it works or it doesn't. And yeah. that like spoke to me because I just love the the pride you take. I know Chris Bianco during uh, the pandemic, I followed him closely yeah. and he's like, I need to pay my people a livable wage oh, yeah, and I'm yeah. not going to like, I'm not going to cut back or cut people mm-hmm. and or cut their wages because we can't afford it. Absolutely. I'm going to still pay them or I'm going to close my restaurants. Yeah. And I just have so much respect yeah. for that mindset. Yeah. yeah. And he almost did go out. And, and I, I never thought I'd see Chris that way. And we had a couple um, we had a couple moments where I, I said, oh, you know, it's you talk about seeing a hero. Um, it's it's uh, disheartening. Mm-hmm. But then he bounces back. The weird story: his, his Jimmy Kimmel's sister was our neighbor. Oh yeah. Jimmy is Jimmy. Jill is mm-hmm. our neighbor, and and mm-hmm. I think Jimmy and a group of people were able to help there. 
That's because Chris Bianco is fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you're around for 30 years dick. and you stay cool as hell. <laughs> Somehow, magically, you're friends yeah. with superstars uh, who are hosting the the um, Oscars. Yeah. Don't you know her? Don't you yeah, she went to Corona. She went to Corona. Yeah, yeah. yeah her was a bad and younger brother, um, John, was. Yeah. A, yes. We played baseball He with does crank acres. Yeah. yeah. So, so imagine Chris Bianco was funny. somehow <laughs> finds himself in that world. Yeah. Because That's they crazy. came in once yeah. and loved it. Yeah. And Chris was, it, it, if you stay around long enough, you stay humble long enough, yeah. you're going to be fine. If, you, if you're 20 years old right now, just stick with it. But don't expect shit. Right. And, and, and Chris showed me a lot. And so Chris... Uh, during his uh, Netflix um, Top Chef, yeah. Yeah. he was at Oatman. That's the farm he was at. Okay. Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. why it was yeah. so special. Because, oh, whoa. That's okay. His, that's the yeah. farm he was at when that's he's it. rubbing. Yeah, the yeah. He's, yeah, and yeah. he's like, they're in the thing. Because yeah. I know Chris was big with the tomatoes. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. the San Rafael the, Valley or San Ramon yeah. Valley in California. Yes. Yeah. And like, and then he, I, oh, I'll fuck the story up, but. He was like, "I'm just gonna fucking do this myself." Yeah, and then and then he, mm. started, yeah, now he, yeah, 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 and he like, passed a torch down, and and a few of us grabbed it. So you you were asking other breweries, like, yeah, that's where this all started. I'm still fascinated with all. So yeah, I'll, 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 yeah. So the Kerns of program, I get a phone call saying, "Hey, we have a regenerative organic program with this Kerns. That Kerns is actual wheat that's it falls over dormant the rest of the year." Then you'll have um, grass-raised animal that you can also process to be to be part of this whole cycle. Mm-hmm. They'll eat that. They'll mow that. And the mm-hmm. next year, all of wow. that soil is alive and wet still. And in Minnesota, yeah. where our kerns was grown, all that fl- the Minnesota River was brown because of any flooding. If you have a or- regenerative organic plot, nothing leaves. Mm, I could see, you, you'll yeah. see the videos. Um, there's five plots that they show in the small diagram. Kearns is here, and then commercial soils here. They put a sprinkler to to reenact two inches of rain. The one that doesn't have anything in it, everything runs off into the bucket below brown water. Kernza, nothing runs off. Mm. No soil uh-huh. degradation, and the Kernza has ten foot root. So. We have a, a ten breweries that we're involved with on this. It's expensive. It's not a cheap grain. Uh, the beer will not make maybe a dollar. So we we all have our part to play, and some of us are just gonna bite bite the bullet, fight the good fight, whatever yeah. you know. Um, and so if you go to whykernza.com or just Google Patagonia beer, you'll see we're one of the the ten, okay. and uh, you'll learn more about that brewers thing like that the other side of it not a lot of brewers are thinking like this not a lot of restaurants yeah. are yeah and, and that's no. what it just seems like that industry to make a buck to, to yeah. turn a profit and all this stuff all the things that you're talking about they all just a couple yeah. of couple of yeah. you know carry the ones it just doesn't seem to add up it doesn't yeah. uh you have to have an accounting team that really ma- yeah. buys in yeah. so our accountant does uh he mm-hmm. he is very aware that mm-hmm. we, there's non-negotiables. But by partnering with some of these other like-minded breweries or restaurants and whatnot that are trying to do something a little bit more than just yeah, put a good does that help plate it scale? On the table. Does that help scale? I think it helps. Yes, I help, I think it helps scale um, because you'll see. I bet Sam Fox is going to have to adjust mm-hmm. um, yeah. to having a couple things in the menu that have these keywords like mm-hmm. Mary's Organics. On, you can't afford it right now. Yeah. We want Mary's Organic. We have their sub organic line, their non GMO uh, original breed line. Still a great line. We want organic chicken. If everyone started buying it, it would change. Yeah. The, the supply demand curve would go down. But everyone, yeah. when I say everyone, the majority of restaurants immediately see that price. You're seeing that price going. That'd be a twenty-two dollar chicken sandwich. Exactly. I get it. Don't yeah. do it. <laughs> yeah. But if we all did it, it would start to become nineteen, eighteen, Normal. and seventeen. And then yeah. when we show the statistics right. about healthcare, mm-hmm. and you realize twenty percent of our income goes to healthcare, three goes to food, because we want it cheaper. I think it's five point six now yeah. to food because of inflation. We could swap that. You know, mm-hmm. twenty goes to food, three percent to healthcare. You're still saying the same money. So there are like-minded folks, um, but you're you're gonna. I, you're going to spend more at those locations, and I would mm-hmm. encourage asking questions because 
a lot of times they're going to talk like me about the stakeholders in, in the back. You know, I, I have a rule if I go into my locations, you got to go say hi to the kitchen. There, there are people who just don't get love yeah. in your kitchen. That's so awesome. good. Yeah. And, yeah. and your, your, your front of housers are wonderful in many ways, but the back of housers, what they go through on a daily basis and get paid uh, a fraction, right. it's, it's part of the system. Yeah of kind of entrapping if you will right, like yeah. we can't pay them that much more right and you, you you're trying to always figure out right. ways and and what i would my goal would be to every single one of them benefit from wilderness and have a bright career yeah but i don't care if you're on the line with us i hope one day you own a restaurant too yeah and, and that's a goal um and that's the other restaurants i don't know if they're saying that yeah. i don't know um and if well, we fail that okay Exactly, because you're, out, cause you're yeah, staying true to right, you yeah. and your mission, absolutely, and the and, and the benefits of the people around it, yeah. which which is why we support it. Yeah, it's not just the food is good, but we we've talked about it just as supporting, right. uh, not just local but local right. with a story because it's authentic because yeah. it's you, right? We're going there because of you. Does, He's, we've yeah. been going to I've been going to some boroughs since 1983 because yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> so no, pretty good burritos. Yeah, pre backpacking. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yeah, um, you, you, one of the things I want to say just right before hand on the wheel, left hand on burrito. <laughs> burrito yeah, so that's a skill. Yeah. I, I, I might get a DUI one day. The just key from is like, not ordering lettuce on the taco when you're eating it in the car. It just oh, doesn't yeah, fall. That's the wow. key. I have so much lettuce in the crevice of my seat. I wish I would have known that <laughs> skill. Oh, my wife's going to laugh at hearing this. You wouldn't believe my truck. I have fields of food in there. Right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Make a little trail mix. Yeah, I have a regenerative organic truck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one of the things I want to say before we wrap up is just talking about where our money goes and I know there there's a wait at your restaurant all the time and you don't need it but I I've been really cautious of like where my money is going like I'm going to mm-hmm. spend money just mm-hmm. because I'm alive and I have to live but if you spend it with a place that's doing the th- kind of things that Jonathan's doing that's just getting recycled in a good way mm-hmm. so like if you're going to buy your beer there or your you know your PB&J burger there one you're getting the great product but also this is the effect that it's having as opposed to buying from a chain that is just going to the pipeline to the you know the stock market and they're worried about their shareholders like it's a totally different mindset so i would just encourage everyone if you haven't mm-hmm. tried it if you want to go like it's amazing and your money's going to just it's a business but it's a great cause it's making the world a better we place we profit share with our employees our managers oh, that's um, incredible. we pat pat and i don't take dividends or bonuses we only pay ourselves a salary um, we're trying to show a new blueprint we we even negotiations on leases things that can feel like it's supposed to be war you know yeah um we try to take a humble approach and we'll get things wrong and that's just human that's that's where Mm -hmm. it's at but i you know you know it's it's a hard time to run a business right now Mm -hmm. and i don't think people when they see that we're busy one day, they don't know that the next might be the slowest day in mm-hmm. our history. And yeah. that's where we're at now. The highs are higher than ever. World Baseball Classic was a year ago today. And all my team's telling us the best week we've ever had financially. This this year, we're 38% down. Um, and so you, you you don't know what to do. Uh, yeah. Summer, last summer, I don't know how... I don't know how everyone didn't shut down. Uh, oh, it was... Last, last summer, summer was, was brutal. Yeah, yeah. and... Yeah. and, and my point here isn't to sob, but it's a thank you to everybody yeah. who says, I will commit one hour of my time at this restaurant, and what we'll give you in return is all of this. From the host to the time you leave, we're very committed to you as a customer. Mm-hmm. We won't even throw your things out, and I'd encourage some brewers to look at it. We won't even throw your stuff out in the landfill. It's all compost. It goes to Recycled wow. City, every single piece of it. Anything we we try to eliminate landfill waste from the front of house side of things, mm-hmm. but downtown mm-hmm. you'll notice we use um, plant based forks and knives and spoons. The paper wrapper is compostable, and all the food waste goes becomes soil that's sold mm-hmm. to a farmer that grows our tomatoes and that's squash. So awesome! That's yeah, awesome. and so yeah. we can sustain society. Mm-hmm. We can do it. Mm-hmm. But guess how many um, compost companies there are in Phoenix, Arizona? One, do you think what? that they are loved by waste management? No. no. Waste management gets, a gets, a, gets a golf tournament. Mm-hmm. Recycle City has to have a very high paying clientele. Yeah. You look at the two mm-hmm. things. And, yeah. and, and so when 
we're when you come in, we're committed from start to finish. That the money you gave us, we're gonna trade you a lot. We're gonna give you that that brandy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're gonna make sure that you know she um, and people like her are mm-hmm. at the forefront of our company. Mm-hmm. They're they're the they're the voices that are heard. Yeah. Not Pat and I, but they are the voices that are heard. And then in the back house, the person who made your food. Might not have gone perfectly. It might be a newer employee. We're, mm-hmm. we're trying. To, we're trying, uh, but our uh, employee retention is the best it's ever been in eleven years. In fact, our front of house is the lowest turnover probably amongst the industry. You can tell. I noticed those things at restaurants, and you could tell people were happy working there and efficient. I think they told us thirty minute wait. We were seated in twenty, and I had a beer in my. Well, I had my beer in my hand while I was waiting, but my food in ten minutes later, and incredible experience. Yeah, I, I do have to coin. We did create a, a wrapper for our burrito or our green chili, and it's made out of tortilla. Good. And so, rather than just going in the <laughs> landfill, you just actually you eat, just the, eat wrapper. the whole thing. You eat yeah. the wrapper. Yeah. It's like zero waste. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that. Yeah, I'm I'm worried. I've had two it. wrappers this week. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jonathan, this was amazing. Yeah. This is another wow. two-parter. We need Very to get him back in yeah. and talk yeah. about. We just got started. Down. We just scratched I know, the surface. I know. Man. But our editor always says, like, you guys can probably go for four hours but it's got to be a, an hour to an hour yeah. 15 so. also because i have a camp light waiting for me as <laughs> Arizona will as do I. Oh, it's a, the camp light's great because our our brewery and, and financially this beer yeah. fits our model less grain yeah less fermentation less need you know for yeah. the smaller alcohol beer and the fact that people like it it's again it's helping sustain i think a very better future for beer right if everyone wants the expensive beer and uh, it's expensive because the cost of goods just exponentially goes yeah. up so it's labor we're not trying to i don't want a 24 dollar four pack this right. is not a dream of mine <laughs> it, it's the, we all have the same margins you go to yeah. every restaurant point yeah. at them mm-hmm. whether they're popular or not same exact yeah. margins yeah it's no one's making more than the other person and if they are they're probably building a new building right now mm-hmm. or whatever but when you're buying something like Camp Light, you're buying into a very um, everyone wins. Mm-hmm. You can have a beer and feel fine. You can have, you can buy a four pack. Uh, also, our new printing is soy ink, so it's 100% recyclable. Wow. So the screen printing on the can yeah. you used to have to take our label off. You put that can in and can you know aluminum's like 89% recyclable if I recall. So. That's another one of those when you buy a can from us. Just recycle it and 100% comes back. And that's that's the icing on the wilderness cake. The the core of it, though, is how good was that beer? How good was that food? How What was the product? Yeah. What was the quality of that moment? And, and, and I applaud my team. None of this is Jonathan Buford. Right. Uh, sometimes you just... Your lease signer. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's well, the it starts, uh, you create the culture, and I know that. And We you, hired a head of people and culture, by the way. Oh, really? Three years ago. Her name is Johanna. She's she's there right now dedicated to all of the th- cultural things we're talking about. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah. It's working. Camp well, Light, a win win. Yes, yes. Right. yes. yes. Ching. And <laughs> double entendre. <laughs> You got your camp, camp light yes. in your tent, you know. Yes. And your tent. Your uh, intent. The, the yeah. intent. <laughs> See? They the actually intent. say that on their website. Yes, yes. I, I didn't it. just create that. Yeah. Hey, did it's you notice a, when they went, they decided to talk about, talk about camping, they didn't invite me? No. Yeah. yeah. We knew you he'd be they, out. Yeah. He'd they be actually out. locked eyes. I know. <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> they're not, I'm going with him then. There's Never mind. Yeah. Yeah. This broke back mountain over here we thought we'd hike. I'm in. He'd ask you a lot of questions about baseball, I think. That's I fine. would. Yeah. That's fine. Randy Johnson's a great photographer. And yes. So yeah. you can yeah, link right? me. So we, right? we've chatted on. That's awesome. He's working with Arizona Highways in a project. And so a, my world, uh, he shot Joe Strummer. Now, with a photograph. not But Joe Strummer. <laughs> somebody call. Yeah. Part of the uh, Clash. Oh, mm-hmm. shit. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, wait, what? what? That's awesome. Yeah. That's what he was right? doing in college. Yeah. He was going around. He's got Chris Cornell. It's, you know Chris Cornell, yeah, yeah Soundgarden, and, and then and then he goes to Africa, and he's he's yeah. got these world class photographs, and I'm mm-hmm. like, I promise you, I don't care about his baseball <laughs> if I'm around him. I just to go on a photography tour yeah. of Arizona yeah. with Randy Johnson, with Randy Johnson, yeah, That's and he's awesome. in, he's got a thing uh, showing yeah. in Scottsdale right mm-hmm. now. Tops hired him to take photographs of the rookies. Really? For uh, this year and put his photographs on baseball cards. It's crazy. Yeah, the Randy wow. Johnson collection. Building That's a so brand cool. 
for young men out there and women. So mm-hmm. don't get me wrong, yeah. this isn't one sided, but I tend to try to help young men out yeah. because I don't think they have a lot of guidance right now. Right. Building a brand, Randy Johnson, Chris Bianco, Joe Johnson, um, Warren Buffett, all these men we've created. Like, look to these people who've built a brand that's based on cyclical, cyclical success. Yep. You'll mm-hmm. know you're doing it right if five years goes by and you're still doing it right. Yep. And yep. Randy Johnson, he's a photographer. <laughs> Photography. I mean, yeah. what so, a yeah. cool yeah. brand! Yeah. And he's got a so daughter mis- who seems to love yeah. him when he's showing. Like, that's, so misunderstood that's from what we all thought of him. Doesn't show yeah. his yeah. car. Doesn't right? show his yeah. Yeah. private yeah. jets. Yeah, yep. it's that success to that's me. cool. Yeah, that's and those are the things that we've gravitated and why we started this yeah. podcast. Just people that are unique and yeah, yeah, you know, bring something unexpected. Yeah. yeah, you know, here we thought we were talking to a craft brewing, you know, craft beer guy. Right, yeah. and a restaurant owner, but yeah, so I mean the, the opening, yeah, that's that, just the start. Everything behind yeah. it, just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for, oh. thank you for sharing all. All right, that. Jonathan, thank you very much. That was fun. Great yeah. to talk to you, man. Thanks for having me. Thank so. you. Take